Animation just had a groundbreaking advancement. Complex facial animations like this and this are now easy thanks to an awesome AI tool called Advanced Live Portrait. With this tool, you can drop in any image and instantly get facial controls to animate a person's face and expressions to create just about anything. Even crazier, you can do this for free at home just using your computer. The process is not only super easy and incredibly fun, but it's also highly versatile and runs insanely fast. It works with 2D characters, 3D characters, as well as live action footage and everything in between. Today, we're diving into using Advanced Live Portrait to create facial animations, tweak facial expressions, and I'll share some tips and tricks as well as some of the limitations so you can determine whether or not this tool will be useful to you. Anyways, I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. To use Advanced Live Portrait, we'll be using a tool called Comfy UI, which is a completely free and super easy to install AI image generation tool. It should be as simple as going to the Comfy UI GitHub and downloading there, but if you're having any trouble getting set up, we also wrote a custom easy installer available on our Patreon. Now, once we have Comfy UI installed, we want to make sure that we also have the Comfy UI manager installed. You can think of this like an expansion pack manager because it lets you significantly enhance your AI image generation experience by being able to download additional tools and models from an easy to use interface. Not only that, but if you've ever dealt with the red screens of death, which means you're missing nodes, you can just use Comfy UI Manager to easily install all of the missing nodes without having to navigate to a bunch of links, saving you a lot of time and headache. Once your Comfy UI is installed and running, you can navigate to the custom node manager located in the Comfy UI Manager menu. Then at the top, you can type in Advanced Live Portrait and click Install afterwards which Comfy UI will ask you to restart. Once that's all set, all you need to do is now create a workflow that actually implements this brand new node. If you've never used Comfy UI, don't worry. I know some of the online tutorials can look super daunting with workflows looking like subway station roadmaps instead of AI generation tools. But trust me, by the end of this, it's going to look super simple. So let's start off by thinking about how this works. Comfy UI uses a node based system, which is a fancy way of saying that you connect wires to boxes and stuff happens. Now, nodes typically have have an input and an output and a bunch of settings in between. If we wanted to import a photo, all we would do is double click in the canvas area and then we would type in load image and select on this node. And you'll see right here, we have a brand new load image node. In the middle, we have the option to pick which photo as well as these little dots at the side, which if we click on them, allows us to drag out their wires. And just like that, we're able to load in an image since I've already used this node in the past, it's just loading whatever old image I have, but for you, it may show up blank. And to pick an image, you can just select choose file to upload. Let's think about how this effect works. It takes an image, changes the expressions, and then shows us an edited image. We already have the image loaded with this load image node. Now let's go ahead and change the expressions. And to do that, we need to add in another node, which is going to be our expression changing node. So you can double click on the canvas and type in expressions, and you'll see expression editor pop up and on the left hand side you'll see a little preview with all of the options as well as you notice here it says advanced live portrait making sure that you're using the correct node once we change the expressions in the image we want to see the final result so i'm going to add in one last node which is going to be the preview image node and now it's just a matter of connecting all the wires together so let's take the load image we want the image to drag into the source image section here of our expression editor and then the resulting image we want to be able to see it so we're going to drag this over to the preview images section and if we hit q we should see an image pop up here on the right side but it looks exactly the same as our input image and that's because we didn't change any settings here in the expression editor and if i go ahead and move some of these settings like rotate pitch rotate yaw nothing is happening and the reason for that is because we have to cue it first for it to get processed and you can see that subtle change just happened right there now let's say we want to actually be able to see these changes in real time and not have to hit the cue button every single few seconds in order to do this we can make use of the auto queue feature which you can access by clicking on this drop down and instead of it saying disabled click on instant and now when I hit this 
you can see it's changed to an infinity sign. And now once I go ahead and hit Q, you can see all of the changes are happening in almost real time. It does take a little bit of time because it does take a fraction of a second to process. But already this is looking super impressive and you can see we have all of these full controls so we can make the character blink, we can move the head around, rotate it, and already this is looking incredibly impressive. Now, most of these settings seem to make sense. The ah, e, woos actually relate to the shape that your mouth makes when making those sounds. And the only other one that might be a little bit tricky is this sample parts and crop factor. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like when the crop factor is very zoomed in. I don't think I'm gonna get it to work all the way well here, but you notice parts of the hair here at the top are getting clipped and that's because we're too cropped into the face. So if you're ever experiencing some issues here, you're gonna wanna increase the crop factor out. That way it's working with a bigger area and you should notice that the hair works perfectly now in this scenario. We're also getting a bit of movement with the shoulders as well to kind of go along with this. Now, if I wanted to stop it running continuously, I can change this to disabled and now we have it nice and paused. And wow, that is a, an interesting final resulting expression. Now, let's say we wanted to try this with a different image. We can actually just pull up a photo of Mona Lisa on Google and then just drag and drop it here into this load image node. And we should see it instantly change once we hit Q and it adopt that same facial expression. So let me go ahead and reset these back to their defaults. And then I'm gonna queue it up again and show you some of the results. Because last time we used a semi 3D, semi illustrated style, whereas this one is entirely a painting. So you could see all of the grungy textures on it. And despite being a painting, the effect is still working amazingly well. So we can get all these fine tuned controls of this facial expression. Let's see if we can make her open up her eyes a little bit more here. Maybe even raise her eyebrows as if she's amazed at something. Here she's uh, impatiently waiting. So yeah, this is super impressive. And again, the results are breathtaking because this is happening in fractions of a second. To put in perspective, doing something like this would take hours easily using any traditional means, whether that's a Photoshop or using After Effects or even going through the painstaking process of 3D modeling a character and then rigging them and doing these facial expressions. Whereas here we have a setup that takes less than a few seconds and it creates an amazing, impressive result. If you wanted to get into the nitty gritty as to how long some of these processes are working, it looks like it's taking only 0.3 seconds to load in the image only 0.18 seconds to actually apply the expression. And the previewing part takes the longest part at about 0.2 seconds, which is showing us that final resulting image from the expression editor. But let's say we wanted to take this another step further because we have other options here as well. So we don't just have to set the ones in the expression editor itself. We can also use a source image to drive the emotions of a target image. And I'll show you what that looks like right here. Here we can create another load image node or I'm going to show you another way which is to drag from this blue sample image section, drag it out and you're going to get these options here that typically relate to whatever it is that that node would like to see. Lucky for us load image shows up there nice and easily and here I can use this image apply it to this loaded image here and let's see the final result and I think that looks pretty good. One thing though is that the head movement did not match entirely and the reason for this is because on the sample parts it's set to only expression whereas we have the option to set it to all which will track everything about the head in this instance. So if I go ahead and hit Q again, bam, you can see the entire head has now shifted off to the right. But I think the expression part looks the best because it keeps in a bit more of that natural head position and the posture of the body, whereas sometimes it's not going to look as natural when you have it set to all. Again, this is going to be dependent on what footage or what images you're working with. So really play around with this and have fun. Now, you may be noticing, though, that these are starting to look pretty ugly, and that's because we have all of these node wires set up and eventually you're not really going to know what's connected to what over time. So one thing I like to do is I like to truncate some of these workflows down, make it so that once we know everything is connected where they need to be, you put them in the right location. And if you hit P on your keyboard, it'll let you pin it to the right spot. That way they don't move about and you can just go ahead and drop in any image you want, have the resulting image and your workflow is nice and easy to do. So here I'm going to drop in a portrait of Madonna from Warhol, see if we can also alter this as well. 
And wow, the results are amazing. Now, if you guys don't want to mess with creating this on your own and just want a super easy to use simple solution, we've actually already created these workflows, color coded them and labeled them in a number of scenarios that you guys can find on our Patreon. For example, here is a version of this workflow that instead of taking a source image, you can take in a source webcam feed and the results are impressive. It works exactly the same way as you saw earlier in which you can drag and drop in any image, except in this case, you're able to use your webcam as the feed. If you were to also set this to instant, you can see those changes getting applied almost in real time. The results are incredible. Another variation of this workflow that we have is instead of using a webcam for this, you can also just use any sort of video feed and that's gonna work for you as well. I'm sure you guys are gonna have fun. All of these are listed out on our Patreon for download as well as easy to install guides and things to get you up and running. As you can see, there's a whole lot of fun to be had messing around with this tool, and I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy it. If you enjoy this, you're probably going to also enjoy checking out this really awesome technique of using Gaussian splatting, which allows you to turn any video into usable 3D high quality assets. It's so amazing and such an interesting technique. I'm sure you guys are going to love it. Anyways, hope to catch you in the next one. Until next time. All right. Peace.